This is the story of Franz Joseph Haydn, Haydn, the story of the choir boy who became a great composer. By Read, Write, and Learn eBooks. Joseph Haydn was born in Rohrau, a little Austrian village not far from Hainburg. It is quite worthwhile for you to look at for this town and for the river Letha in any large geography. You may not find Rohrau itself, for it is a very small town, but you will surely find the river Letha which flows by it. The parents lived in a very modest little house. The picture of this house is worth studying and remembering. As you see, it is one story with a thatched roof. The farm buildings are joined to the house itself. The windows look inviting and pretty. They seem to tell us very plainly that it is warm and cozy within. It will be easy for you to remember the year in which Joseph Haydn was born, because you have already learned in school that our president, George Washington, whose picture shall be inserted here, was born in the same year, 1732. This president's birthday was in what month? What day of the month? Joseph Haydn was born on March 31st of the same year. He used to say that he was born in the night between March 31st and April 1st. Washington's father died in the year when he died in the year when he and Joseph Haydn were 10 years old. This is a picture of Washington as a man bidding his mother goodbye before leaving off to the war. Little Joseph Haydn's father and mother were poor, but they loved cleanliness and system. They feared God, worked hard, and loved music. Joseph's father used to sing in a clear tenor voice, accompanying himself on the harp. At home, little S S Joseph was called Seppel. When the child was old enough, he too began to sing. He quite surprised everybody, everybody by his sweet voice. In the neighboring town of Hainburg, there lived a schoolmaster named Franck, who used to visit the Haydens and play the vi violin. Sepperl used to watch him very closely, and one day he too began to play the violin while his father and mother were singing. But he had no real violin, of course, so he had to play on a make-believe one of two sticks, but he sang in tune and kept time with his wooden bow. One day, the schoolmaster chanced to come along the, up along the street while the little boy was playing his make-believe music. Watching him closely, he saw that he was really fond of music. Then, Cousin Franck, as they called him, had a long talk with Sepperl's father and mother. After a while, it was agreed that the little boy should go to Hainburg, the palace that you found on the map, and there become a pupil, pupil of the schoolmaster. They worked hard at the school in those days. Once, when Haydn was an old man, he said, I shall be grateful to that man, the schoolmaster, that is, as long as I live for keeping me so hard at work, but I used to get more floggings than food. When he was six years old, Sepul could stand up like a man and sing masses in the church choir, besides playing a little on the piano and the violin. It once happened that a drummer was needed in the procession of Hain in Hainburg. Franck called Sepperl and showed him how to make the stroke, but the boy was so small that he had to have someone else carry the drum for him. Sepperl followed up and beat, it, and beat it as he had been taught. Haydn was very fond of playing the drums, and even a, as a boy, tried to learn how to play right. But Joseph Haydn was to do other things. One day, a man from Vienna visited the pastor of the Hainburg church. He heard the little boy sing, and liked his voice so much that he invited him to become a choir, choirster in the huge church of St. Stephen. He was eight years old when he arrived in the great city of Vienna, still a little farther away from home than he was at Hainburg. There was much else to do in the great church besides singing in the choir. There were music studies, of course, and singing, violin, and piano playing. But there were also school studies to be learned every day. There was religion, Latin, writing, and arithmetic. But one must not think that because Sepperl was a busy musician, he did not like to have fun like other boys of eight. One day, the choristers sang at the royal palace at Schoenbrunn, just outside of Vienna. The scaffolding was still standing above the building, and Joseph climbed to the top. The Empress Maria Theresa caught him at this mischief and gave an order that 
that blockhead should have a good spanking. Four, five years after Joseph Haydn entered St. Stephen's, his brother Michael joined the choir. It was just at that time that Joseph's voice began to change. One day, when the empress heard him, she said his voice sounded more like a rooster's crowing than anything else. The choir master, taking the hint, prepared to dismiss him. But before Joseph said goodbye to his schoolmates, his spirit of fun bubbled over again. Someone had left a pair of new scissors where he found them. What should he cut with them? Ah, he knew he would cut off the pigtail of one of the choir boys, and he did. Joseph Haydn was never lazy. His father and mother had taught him to love work. He was industrious, happy-hearted, and made friends easily. People loved him, and he began to meet those who could help him. One of those was the great poet Metastasio. Another was the singing master Nicolas Popora, who taught him his music composition in return for which the boy brushed the master's clothes, polished his boots, did anything else, everything, even to running errands. And all because he was so anxious to be taught how to compose music. Then, soon afterward, Haydn met Gluck, the opera composer, and another time Wolfgang Mozart and his father, Leopold. So you see, he was getting on famously. One day, he was invited to become the music director, or Weisskappelmeister, as it was called, in the family of a great man who is known as Prince Paul Anton Esterhazy. Haydn's position in the Esterhazy home gave him just the opportunity he wanted. There was a orchestra, and for it, he composed all sorts of music. When the band was to play for the prince's family and its guest, Haydn and the players were required to wear white stockings and white collars and a pigtail or tie wig. If you could have watched him conduct the players, you would have seen a very short man with short legs, his face pitted with the marks of smallpox. His nose was large, his eyes gray, but the, of the kindest expression. And here is a picture which shows exactly how the good-natured sort of fellow looked. A butcher in the town where Joseph was living wanted to celebrate his daughter's marriage with fitting music and was bold enough to ask Joseph to compose a minuet for the occasion. Joseph good-naturedly consented and wrote the oxen minuet and made the butcher and his daughters very happy. People say that, that soon after the wedding, the butcher appeared at Joseph's door, leading an ox all decorated with ribbons and gilded horns. For many years, Haydn remained in the place uh, in the peace and quiet of the Esterhazy family, but nevertheless, his good work was heard of in distant places. He received many invitations to travel to foreign countries. One of these he accepted. He went to England, twice in fact. The night before he left Vienna, he and Mozart dined together. Do not go on such a long journey, Mozart begged of him. You are too old, and you do not know languages enough to travel through so many countries. But, said Haydn, I know one language that is understood everywhere, the, lang the language of music. Mozart said farewell, farewell to his old friend. They never met again. On the way north along the Rhine, Haydn met Beethoven at Bonn, and it was arranged that Beethoven should study with Haydn on his return to Vienna. When the traveler reached Calais, he took a boat to Dover in England. He was so enchanted by the sight of the sea, and he sat on deck all the way to watch it. Never before had he seen such a sight, for we must remember he was born far inland. Most men do their best work in their younger years, but in Haydn's later years he wrote two of his greatest works, The Creation and The Seasons. The creation was loved by all people. It was one of a, the group of famous oratorios which have found a warm place in the hearts of the people. With it stand the Messiah, Judas Maccabeus, St. Paul, and Elijah. Do you know who composed each of these? After the English journeys, Haydn lived quietly in Vienna in what is, we now know as the Haydn House. Should you ever go to Vienna, you will be welcomed there by a caretaker who will show you the rooms in which Haydn lived. One day, toward the end of his life, he asked his servant to carry him to the piano. While the members of his household stood near him, he played three times very solemnly the Emperor's Song. This is the way Haydn wrote his name. <laughs> 